Hello everybody, I'm here for the Hero Game Channel. Welcome back to Kaiser Redux and to the Kingdom of Hungary. We're currently led by Karl, but he is not going to be here for long. You may notice that we are in January of 1937. I decided just to go ahead and skip ahead slightly to when the um, the year that the Augsgleek renegotiations, I know I pronounced that incorrectly, um, take place. I thought, well, 1936, nothing happens, and I've literally just been doing army focuses and kind of getting my army ready for the potential war with the rest of the Austrian Empire. Um, hopefully we can avoid it. Um, so, the rest of the world stage, the Commune of France is led by Benoit Fracon. Oh, the Russian states just arrived with Boris Savinkov. UK is led by, well not the UK, the UN Britain is led by Tom Mann of all his glory. Um, the Beijing government is here, Wellington Ku. Uh, Zha Lama is in charge of Mongolia, Kolchak still in um, Transamur. I don't think a lot else has changed except from the two Sicilies, not the two Sicilies, my day's doing wrong, wrong version of Kaiser. Um, the socialists in Italy have decided to get cooed by Giovanni Messi and are probably going to join up with uh, Julius in the Italian Federation. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that Ilria will revolt against the Austrians as well and we'll have a kind of temporary alliance with them and we'll hopefully beat the Austrians. Um, we're also going to support Bulgaria when the time comes for the the Fourth Balkan War. Oh, stand up in America, of course. Hello to the Civil War. Everybody's favorite boys. What? Flag are you? Okay. Ah, yes, the Pacific Congress is leading them. Right. I'll do one more focus and I think it'll be time for us to potentially start working down the political part of the focus tree. So what's going to happen is, because I've been keeping an eye on the path guide here, we want to go totalist first, so we're going to boycott the, the renegotiations and select Arpad Sikasits, Arpad. Um, so we're going to be a social democracy and then he's going to get replaced by Bella Kun. Bella Kun however you pronounce that, um, and then we've basically just got to get the communists to flee the city after doing some focuses and then initiate a bomb. They go off and then uh, the national populace will take control of the nation and then we'll go from there. Sweden has declared war on Norway. Okay, Oscar. Do you know what? I'm fine with that. The radical socialists. You might as well deal with them. So... I don't think Austria's got too many divisions right now, so if we do end up at war with them. I am currently building some divisions. Um Okay. Hans Hans has joined the Entente. And so is Evelyn Baring. Oh, invitation to the Augs League, or however you pronounce it. What the why would Hans join the Entente? Ah, Slovaks and Romanians invited to the Ausgleich. I don't know how you say that. As if it weren't enough that the Austrian government has called for Czechs, Poles and all their ethnicities of the other side of the empire to the negotiation table, they've probably done the same even for the nationalist groups from their borders. The Slovaks and Romanians in the Carpathian Basin had been subdued successfully for centuries, but support from Vienna has awoken underground nationalist movements from their slumber. And we're going to choose just protest is not enough. We shall not take part get boycotted. It's going to lead to some tensions between us and Austria. Obviously. Right, we'll just refrain from doing any focuses. I'll go ahead and actually get us up to limited conscription. So we are a pretty thick boy already. Um, I'm hoping we can get even thicker. Don't know if we actually get any war goals on people per se, but uh, the counter-revolution. We're going to be going down this part of the tree straight away because it gets the recovery of Black Monday and over Black Monday over and done with. Oh. Okay. Get some cores and stuff. Cool. I don't actually think we get any 
war goals via the focus tree, but we will be going after the Balkans, really. And that's just the coming of France justifying on us because they'll be doing demand Hoche Savoy, which the Swiss will probably just hand over to them. Upper Savoy will go back to them. Um, is that a Venice I see? It is indeed. Slovak and Romanian nationalism, without doubt inspired by the support of the king and his government of Vienna, have given them during the August League negotiations. Slovak and Romanian protesters march in the streets, holding pro-Austrian but anti-Hungarian protests. Yep, thank you very, very much for that. Um, I didn't actually show off the national spirits we're currently got. Um, constituent of the Austrian Empire. Austro-Hungarian ties broken, which is actually good for us. Uh, we have widespread unemployment, language training, unified uh, recruitment scheme, which is a nice one. And obviously we've got the demonstrations. Language training is going in July. Uh, basically we had something called Army Slavic at the beginning. Austria demands our authorities evacuate Slovakia and Transylvania. Nope. Not happening. Alright, the Belgrade Pact's forming. It seems Hungarian independence will come to, as a shock to Vienna. The Emperor has proposed an armistice for the time being, though he has refused to recognise Hung Hungary's independence. Well, he will definitely meet our wrath at some point, and the German Kaiser has followed his lead. I'll just remember that when you're losing to the Third International in Germany. The Austrians wish to maintain Hungary within the Habsburg domain are willing to negotiate rather than resort to violence for the time being. It's probably the Austrians... It's probable that the Austrians will use this time to mobilise their smaller military. It's also likely that if we maintain our independence, we will eventually come to blows. Yeah, we'll have an armistice for the time being. And it's time to choose our new leader. It is going to be the Social Democrats and ARPAD. And what we can do now is, we can go ahead and do... Is this a social democracy? Ah, for a new order in the Balkans. On the initiative of Serbia, several countries have conveyed in Belgrade to discuss the political and military situation in the Balkans. During the Congress, a new military alliance was founded, the so-called Belgrade Pact, physically aimed against our former ally Bulgaria, of whom the countries have lost territory in the Velkrieg. If we openly announce our support for Bulgaria, it may keep the Belgrade Pact from declaring war on them. It doesn't, but will help Bulgaria. And the Social Democratic Provisional Government. So our government is going to go kind of on a... on the Declaration of the Sublime Ottoman Federation. Ah yes, the legitimacy of protesting. Well, we don't care. Yeah, our government is going to go through a very rocky period for the rest of um, 1937 and maybe into 1938. Ah, now the traditionalists are protesting the return of the totalists. And it's Spanish Civil War time. Reactionary rebels. That's not good. Oh, it's been resolved. Territory has been returned to France. And let me guess, yes, peace and reconciliation. Boring. Peace with the Mafia. Okay. Right, we'll go ahead and do administrative reorganization. So I think we literally do... Maybe name the party as well, these two focuses, and I think then we get the next event. Prime Minister Arpad uh, was always a fellow traveller to the syndicalist movement. Um, it was for this reason he invited the arc, arc leftists of the Hungarian politics to return home to Hungary. And it was for this reason he incorporated many of their inf most influential members in, in numbers in his government, including Bela Kun and Matthias Rakosi. These totalists with the re revolutionary ideals and ties to Paris quickly amassed a following in the new Hungarian government. Yes, yeah, so basically they've done a power play and they've kind of forced Bela to take control after much debate has been agreed that Vienna shall be the site of the negotiation reconciliation between Hungary and Austria, high-ranking members of both the military and national diet attended the first meeting. The Ringstrasse was filled with cars and shouts and mirrored languages. Starting off the event, the Archbishop of Vienna, Theodor Anitzer, blessed the court, praying that God may provide swift words and swifter reprieve. Afterwards, but Iman accounted for, the negotiations began. Yep, and they're probably not going to end very well, is my guess. Um, but I don't think we have to be concerned at all. For the time being. And our army is slowly growing in size. Officers resign in protest. Yep, we lose a lot of generals, but we gain a lot as well. Again, this will change. 
um, as soon as we uh, switch to being national populist. What we'll go ahead and do is we'll grab the industrial company for that military and civilian factory construction speed. We are hit slightly. Yeah, minus 30 construction speed. Currently from Black Monday. Um, so that's what I want to deal with straight away. So, yep, name the party. So that only takes 35 days. And then we should be good to go from there. So, Social Democrats sidelined. And whispers of the counter revolution. Dun dun dun. Probably have a lot of. Yes, you can tell from the look they're syndicalist. Militias attack the government. You're going to unite or what? Like, you're. Oh, Manuel's back, so I think they'll maybe be one focus away from actually uniting. Army ignores Budapest. Who's leading? Henry J. Geyser. I don't think I've ever seen him before. And the negotiations are heating up between the Austrian and Hungarian factions, and peasants side with the militia. Oh, the Russians are led by Pavel Gorgolov. The man who assassinated Kerensky. Um, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. The Green Dictator. Crush monarchists. Detroit socialists. Pressure, uh, prosecute capitalists. Oh god, that does not... Every man a peasant. Okay. Prone ambushes our forces. This is going to be our future leader. Prone. I can't remember what his first name is. Pal? Or, or something like that. Oh, there we go. The Fourth Balkan War. Wait, what? What faction just formed there? The Force Publique. Okay. Oh, oh no. Mau Mau's back. Hello, Obama. Counter revolutionary government formed in Sesget. Goring. What's happening, man? Oh dear. Yes, you are definitely breaking. And very rapidly as well. Counter revolution marches on Budapest. Perfect. That's what we're waiting for. Okay, the party's been named. Siege of Budapest. So, the forces of the counter-revolution have arrived at the capital. Arrayed before the city, the threat suddenly seemed much more dire than it did before. Where are the people rising up to defend us? Where are the loyal sections of the army? At the moment, most of the Hun Vedseg is staying out of the conflict. Wait to see who comes out on the other side. Cowards. The revolution lies and die. It lives and dies in the back of the working class of Budapest. Unionists and party members have armed themselves, ready to oppose the reactionaries of the crossings of the Danube. They will defend the city. Yeah, but they're going to flee. They're going to run away in the fall of Budapest. Flags fell throughout the city after it became known that Bella, Matthias and Tibor and other architects of the revolution could no longer be found on their posts and have fled the city. The forces of order marched into the city largely unmolested. What? Uh, though Pal Prune was ab still able to unleash his reactionary violence on the remaining barricades in the industrial quarter, these valiant workers were put to the sword without mercy, becoming eternal martyrs of the revolution. The Hungarian National Defence League has established itself in the National Parliament and begun its occupation and pacification of the city. However, the Pfizer Revolution will live on so long as uh, Bella and his coterie can reach France. Yay! That all seems fantastic. Minus 10 stability for 730 days. Ah yes, and that focus has been cancelled. And we can't do anything else just yet. Communist officers purged. Yep, and a lot of our generals come back to us. However, not the three best generals we had, sadly. Who all had the 30 division capacity on them. But these guys are still decent. Okay. Albania has joined the Austrian faction. And Bela has been found. Attempting to pass through a military checkpoint. I'll be the best. And he was declared guilty of crimes against the state and executed by firing squad after. Cut the devil by his tail. Perfect. 
don't know why Albania has decided to join the faction. But okay, and I don't know why they weren't at war. They must have done a deal. Monarchists arrived from Austria. We we don't care about the monarchists. Zanzibar is here. Conflict within the coalition. Tensions are rising. Middle Africa is gone. Yep, it's gone. Aha! Murder was foul. Monarchists and legitimists have gained momentum in the coalition conflict to select a new palatine. Leaders of the legitimist movement met at Matthias Church to cite Emperor Karl's coronation to discuss their next moves away from the eavesdropping ears of militiamen and nationalists. Sorry if you can hear cars going past them. Um, I've got the window open. It's roasting here. And it's 10 to 10 at night. Uh, it was a prime target for anyone opposed to the new government, yet no enemies of the counter-revolution ought to have known such a meeting was taking place. After most of the participants had arrived, a stranger entered the church, declared his eternal loyalty to the Sinclair's revolution, and revealed the dynamite vest beneath his coat. And disaster! The bomb goes off. The Matthias decree last night. Okay, Dominion of West Africa. What? Dominion of West Africa. Oh, hello. Okay. Yeah, a syndicalist bomber killed the Patriots and Don Lehar. Miklas Horth. Oh, Horth is dead, and a dozen of leaders of the Counter Revolution. A simultaneous attack. My syndicalist gunman targeted the Hotel Britannia, where Pal Prone was injured in the fighting. This brazen cowardly act of sabotage and murder has robbed Hungary of its heroes in its greatest hour of need. A derogation of captured conspirators was revealed. This was part of a greater plan by syndicalists to overthrow the government. The plot was foiled. The bombers arrested the remaining syndicalists will be hunted down and defeated. In the wake of the attack, the Hungarian National Defence League issues the Matthias Decree, empowering Palestine with extraordinary authority, including the power to dissolve the national diet. The attempt of life had left him scarred, but his resolve has never been stronger. In order to ensure the security continued stability of the nation, Palperone will assume the role of Lord Palatine of Hungary. Boom. And he has a pretty fancy hat on. But anyways, that has opened up nationalist Hungary. So, Paul... Uh, Pal, not Paul, Pal Prony and his patriots have successfully delivered the country from communism. Rather than restore Habsburg rule, they have decided that Hungary will be led by Hungarians, again for the first time since 1849. Prony's clique of ultra-nationalists is prepared to introduce its own revolution to Hungary based on Magyarism, Catholicism and National Socialism. And what's happening here? Canada evokes the War Measures Act. Good for them. So let's go ahead and do National Socialism. Coined by... Gulia Gombos, a leader of Hungary's far-right politics until his death in 1936, National Socialism an alternative to the internationalist modes of economic organization. Alternately termed the National Christian Theory, it calls upon all Hungarians to put aside their personal interests for the common good of Hungary. Hungary above all. That is pretty nice. Construction speed plus 20 on military factories, civilian factories, 10 on dockyards. A military factory, stability, all good stuff modifies the Black Monday National Switch slightly as well. It's all good stuff. Although I do feel like we're getting closer and closer to a potential conflict with our lovely neighbours, the Austrians. And they are starting to build a military. Negotiations on minorities. The question of minorities is precisely what foiled the Augs Augsgleek and yet the Austrians dare bring it up again. It is true that Hungarians are the minority in many parts of Transyl I'm just gonna say Transylvania where the one where they can be found. When there can be found many Germans, Slovaks, Romanians and Jews that live as citizens. The Emperor insists that these people should be granted greater rights within the country to avert nationalist revolts. They should be granted the same privileges as Hungarians. Naturally conservative members of the delegation rejected this notion. It seems ridiculous that Hungarians should treat minorities as if they are equals in Hungary. More conciliatory diplomats ensued, insisted that a compromise must be reached with the Austrians if Hungary is to avoid war. However, even the liberal members of the delegation recognise this will not go over well with the most Magyars, who are traditionally given their vote to nationalist parties. I say we tell Austria to bugger off and do their own thing. Why is there so many divisions over here? The Reg authorities going after Nepal. And I'm going to grab myself. Who do I want to grab? Belgian Declaration of Independence. Hmm. Oh, artillery, definitely. 
Good for them. How are we doing on our turn? Uh, I don't know what's going on outside, but that is making a hell of a noise. Sweden has joined the Reichspact. I think we've almost got enough troops to cover this part of the border. Nova Russia has declared war on... That was a silly decision. Right, freeholds and smallholds. Socialists were atheists, cosmopolitans and internationalists. But even worse, they were common thugs. Confiscating the very land from under people for shame. The Hungarian government will protect private property ownership. Reserve land reform for disloyal aristocrats. The property is greatly accepted for the benefit of veterans associations. Nice, infrastructure and some bonuses for industry. National Socialism. A uniquely Hungarian philosophical, uh, ph philosophical movement has taken hold of politics. Divorced from similar movements like Legionarism and Integralism, some call it a mix of social conservatism and syndicalist economics. This is much too simple. It's a total word view, world view, an appeal to the natural instincts of men called National Socialism, and popularized by the late leader of the right, Gulia Gombos, it now influences many of these, those leading the nation's government, including the party himself. Gombos advocated a unitary Hungarian nation without class distinctions. Only fools questioned how the Palatine could balance such idealistic promises with the interests of magnates, farmers, and the church. Bedrock Foundation's the National Socialist Worldview enables him to draw the right conclusions. Oh my god, we squeak there. A time since Paul Brunet took over Hungary, he has surrounded himself with more experienced and rightist politicians, especially those associated with National Socialist philosophy of Gulia Gombos. These include men such as Bell Emredi and Laszlo. But Dossi Prony is now Supreme Leader and Lord Palatine, Obst ostensibly governing the nation in lieu of the Habsburg King, but without plans to revive the dual monarchy in the near future. For the new Hungary, based on the long and storied history of the Magyar people, destroy all foreign influence, Austrian, German, or otherwise, he will restore the pride and independence of whatever that is and how it's pronounced. He had selected the famed professor, geographer, and in no grapher, Count Pal, typically as his prime minister. Who needs a king anyways? We don't need a bloody king. We do not need a king. Um, I think we go for probably a division. A division of attrition. Trench speed and division. Yeah, we'll go for that. And we'll go ahead and not research that. We'll go ahead and research some more industri industrial stuff. And Hawaii's joined the Pact. I guess sort of widespread unemployment. That's good. Back in business. Oh, back in black, sorry. I <laughs> can't even read. Three military, three civvies. Good stuff, good stuff. So that modifies now. That's national export economy. Minus five consumer goods. It's actually pretty nice, actually, reading the whole thing. Right, let's do patriotic industry. The socialists were rocked wrong in their methods but in their goals. Why should the corrupt and disloyal industrialists, many of whom are not even Hungarian, be allowed to close their doors and hoard their wealth while the Magyar people languish? Seize the means of production and put them in the hands of the Hungarian patriots and veterans who will meet our production targets. Ideal, an appeal to tradition. Tradition can s just go away. Peasants and the aristocrats own owe their lives to the Palatine. Was it not he the first went into the country to protect them from the badness of Black Monday? It was not his brave white guardsmen that put a stop to depri his deprivations. Now the Palatine calls upon them to do their part to deliver Hungary from its economic woes and to forget all those poisonous socialist ideas like class warfare. Crony wishes to reconcile the traditional good relations between landlords and the state servants so that all of us might work together to build a better. Magyarovskzag. Remember who protected you. Remember! All we want you to do, just remember. Negotiation reach an impasse. Negotiations begin a breakdown between Austria and Hungary. The Emperor attended the most recent session of negotiations. First, he merely watched and listened. When he finally didn't speak, he asked why the Hungarians should want independence and why did they deserve independence. The officer spoke of Hungarian soldiers sacrificing the first Felkreich. The diplomat cited the Hungarian people loyalty in the war and promised everlasting friendship between Austria and Hungary. The Emperor seemed bemused or unmoved. Question whether the other minority groups in Hungary had not made the same sacrifices. Peace is balanced on a knife's edge. Do you know what, Carl? I don't like 
the way you're uh, talking there. I don't like it one bloody bit. But at least my army is growing. Growing and it's almost equipped. So am I still a puppet? Right? No, I am actually 100% independent. The glitters in the Patagonian workers front. We didn't need that. Intergrillish Brazil, hello there. Seems like the Pacific States is actually winning. And Bulgaria lost. And you're still independent. Why haven't you guys joined together? Why haven't they joined together? Oh, the Russians finally finished that war. Let's do export economy. So almost recover from Black Monday will be replaced by residual effects of Black Monday. Hungary is a great nation, rich in resources. Unfortunately, it is not heavily industrialized, nor does it demand much industry. In order to modernize the economy, we must tailor our fledgling industry to match the needs of our neighbors, like Germany, Austria, and even Russia. And we got ourselves some more. Nationalist coup in White Ruthina, more war, Boris III is here. Yep, I'm not surprised they joined the region block. Oh, and what now? Serbia. Stat is a modern negro. Oh, this could be a good time to strike the Austrians if I wasn't still in the faction. Wait, the Austrian conflict's been resolved? Get in the bin. How... Oh, Belgrade's on the control. Oh, can we, can we please revolt? Ilria, you beautiful buggers. You absolute beautiful buggers. I'm, ve I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that indeed. I don't think there's a way for me to declare war on giving national army. No, right, make work bureaucracy. The most important part of the economic recovery is getting people back to work with money in their pockets. The appearance of recovery is more important than the reality. With our hands in the tillers of state, we can put many of the jobless to work through the Hungarian bureaucracy, especially through grants of uh, grants for artists, academics, writers, and laborers willing to glorify the Magyar nation. That sounds good to me. War comes. <gasps> for months, Austrians and Hungarians have tried to come to some sort of accord. Everything has failed. The emperor's insistence on what he calls fair treatment for the various ethnic groups of Transylvania will result in nothing less than the national dismemberment of Hungary and the reduction of the Magyar people in their own country. Much of the general staff you to insist that this was simply a ploy by the Austrians to buy time and increase the size of their military anticipation on an inevitable conflict. Well, the thing is, I'd like to say that we are pretty much ready for this. As ready as we can be. I'm just going to grab a lot of you guys. Oh, sugar, actually. We only got four on there. Need three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. Right, we're going to leave the episode there and we'll get into the war in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And I shall be back tomorrow for our episode. Until then, do take care. Cheer bye. Then now.